Uh, my name is Ezra, I work in the area of the Alcasa Air Labs, and I'm focusing on the interactions of Zika virus with uh, Zika virus 3 prime UTR with host cellular proteins. So let's look a little bit about why we care about Zika in the first place. Uh, Zika is a mosquito-borne disease. This is sort of the guy. Um, we're seeing more area where mosquito-borne diseases can spread to. Due to global climate change, we are getting an increase in range of the specific mosquito that carries Zika virus, which means that we're starting to see more instances of Zika infection in the United States, mostly in Florida and California. And why we care is that Zika has a tropism for tissues in the placenta that mediate the interaction between the mother's blood and the fetus's blood. And when Zika infects these structures, it can get from the mother to the fetus, where it will cause uh, severe uh, brain development damage. And it does this by infecting the neural progenitor cells. And you can see the normal brain over here with uh, uninfected cells and an infected brain where these neural progenitor cells are actually killed. And what happens from here on is that now these cells are dead and cannot differentiate into the parts, normal parts of the brain. So you get a deformation called microcephaly, which is um, severe developmental, which is associated with se de severe developmental delay, seeing problems, hearing problems, and severe seizures, and severe learning disabilities. So it's quite a socially and uh, an expensive and socially damaging disease to get. Um, so let's look a little bit at the actual Zika virus. It's actually quite a small and simple virus. Uh, its genome is one strand of plus sense RNA, which means it can be directly translated. Uh, its coding region over here is flanked by two regions that are untranslated, or called UTRs. And these are kind of strange for a virus to have, because viruses like to fit as much genome or proteins as they can in as little space. So why is Zika kind of wasting some space on parts of the genome that once again aren't translated or the proteins? And let's talk a little bit about the biology central documents important to understanding how Zika replicates. Uh, normally in biology we go from DNA, which is coded to transcribe to RNA, which is translated to a protein. But what we have in Zika is that we have a UTR that doesn't translate to a protein. Instead, the UTR itself folds and goes on to interact with host proteins. So let's take a look at why we want to look at the UTR. Um, it turns out that this UTR that we see in Zika over here, parts of the UTR are conserved all throughout the flat B virus family, which suggests that there's some evolutionary importance to having this UTR in the first place, and that it performs some important unknown function. So we see that actually uh, these two structures over here, they're found not only in Zika, but in dengue fever and Japanese encephalitis, which are more mosquito-borne uh, floppy virus. So previously, the Ugandan strain of uh, Zika virus has been quite well characterized. And the first step was kind of to see how uh, what the differences are between the Zika from Brazil, which is one of the main ones that we're seeing in America, versus the one in UTR. And here's actually the sequence alignment between the two. And as you can see that other than maybe a few spots here, here, and here, that they're almost exactly the same. They're actually 96% the same. And if you go on, you can actually use that the Ugandan UTR, which has already been mapped out and split into its active structures, so one, two, three, four, and five, uh, is almost identical to the Brazilian UTR, which is the one that we're going to talk about. And uh, part of the project is a, is a lot of molecular cloning. So you want to get out, uh, you want to be able to ma manipulate the UTR and focus on different structures in the UTR. And an important part of that is knowing if that these structures, if, if these structures expressed by themselves are stable. So what we have here is uh, each of the parts of the UTR that you expect to find in the cell with a little bit of modification at both its three prime and five prime ends. And 
these modifications are a result of the molecular cloning process. And we want to make sure that when we clone our UTR sequence, that it doesn't interfere with the folding of the UTR. Because the utility of the UTR is not just in the sequence, but also in its 3D structure and how it folds. And it turns out they don't. So that's good. And here's just a little model of how I decided to split the active structures of the UTR with um, one going from the five, uh, one going from the five prime to the three prime. End. So a uh, large part of the methods, once again, is molecular cloning and how I must um, kind of pick the right parts of the UTR to study and then replicate them out. So we first start off with something called a PCR, which is DNA amplification and inserting it into a plasmid or a vector, and then something called artificial transcription, which is how we actually get our active piece of Zika UTR RNA. So we start off with a template, a uh, DNA template of the UTR, and we attach uh, primers to it. And these primers have a restriction site and a promoter sequence. Well, this one just has a restriction site. And what happens with these primers is that the sequence gets inserted into the DNA template once that DNA template is replicated. So we get them over here, and over here. And what this allows us to do is that it allows us to treat it with restriction enzymes, which are enzymes that cut when they see a certain sequence, and we use our Zika uh, 3 prime UTR template with sticky ends. And what we can do then is we can digest a plasmid or a circular piece of DNA with the same enzymes and actually insert our sequence into this plasmid. And we want to do this because this is more stable than just having a, um, I guess, RNA UTR to like, copy off of. So it's easier to store and manipulate DNA. And particularly in a plasmid, because we can actually transform a bacteria with this plasmid and create like a living genomic library of all the sections of the UTR that we study. And when we just want to uh, say look at uh, say section one, we can pick the bacteria with the colony of section one, isolate the plasmid, and then you can feature transcription. And here's my first uh, cloning results. Uh, they're verified by a DNA amplification of the sequence that I inserted into the plasma. So I actually took the live bacteria and put it into the PCR machine and amplified um, the, the, my inserted sequence. So that's what all these plots are. That's the actual inserted sequence. So the next steps are going to be in vitro transcription. And what, how this is done is that, remember, before we put in the T7 promoter, what we use now is a T7 RNA clonerase. And that will start over here and create our piece of RNA, which is great. But now it's now, now the RNA is kind of in a solution with a bunch of other proteins. It's with polymerase, it's with free nucleotides, and whatever. And we don't want any of that. We want the pure UTR. So now we must use a gel electrophoresis to purify. And what this does is it runs an electric current over our little samples that we load into the wells, and it separates out the RNA by uh, electric current, and the RNA will move down to the electric current, or the electric gradient. And then after this, we can cut it out of the gel, and then dissolve the gel, and then get our uh, piece of RNA. But that RNA is now non-folded because we just ran it through a gel. So much like uh, pieces of unbaked dough, they're not really anything yet until we introduce them to the right conditions to fold. Like you would uh, fold and bake a pretzel. You would also have to now uh, introduce your RNA to cellular-ish conditions, so neutral pH, optimal salt concentrations, and what have you. And that will encourage our now single piece of RNA to fold into our active UTR. And then the next part is identifying the actual interactions between the host proteins and this 3 prime UTR. And essentially it's like molecular fission. We have our now expressed uh, Zika 3 prime UTR.